With the holiday season now officially in full swing, we are turning to the Festival of Lights, which begins Sunday, November 28th. For the 6.4 million Jews in the United States, Hanukkah serves as a reminder that miracles really do happen. For more on this special season, let's welcome in our guest, Rabbi Ar Arye Spiro. He is the president of the Caucus for America. Rabbi, it's good to see you. Uh, thank you for being here. You're, you're also the author of a new book called Pushback, Reclaiming the American Judeo-Christian Spirit. I want to start off by talking to you about that. Uh, and uh, what uh, what we need to do in this country, I think it's a great message for, for, uh, for these times, what we need to do to reclaim the American Judeo-Christian spirit. Well, I think the first thing is that we have to find out what exactly it is. And what it is is this wonderful ethos that gave this country prosperity, which is the idea of personal responsibility, not blaming everybody else, but personal responsibility, not having a sense of entitlement, but going out and working. Working is part of the Judeo-Christian ethos. Six days shall your work, God said. On the seventh day you rest, but six days you're supposed to work. The idea of liberty, as it says in the Bible, that proclaim liberty throughout the land. So liberty, personal responsibility, work, a, a moral basis for the uh, attitudes and outcomes of what you do in life. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, that what goes with free markets, the ability for a person to choose how he makes a living and for a government not to interfere, really not to interfere on a, a, a harsh level with a person trying to, to make that living. And of course, a belief in, in a God. Any nation that does believe in the biblical God uh, is generally going to be a successful nation because they learn discipline and they learn gratitude, which Thanksgiving is all about. You have gratitude to the Almighty, but then you have gratitude to your country for the wonderful freedom and liberty it gives people, opportunity. So that's the Judeo-Christian ethos, and we should not be embarrassed by it, but proud of it. It's been the key to our success and happiness. What a great message. And from Thanksgiving, as you pointed out, on to Hanukkah. So talk to us about the miracle of Hanukkah and a little bit more about the holiday. Well, I think a lot of people by now know the story that the Syrian Greeks were trying to overrun Israel and to change its culture and to make it a vassal state. And at all odds, the, the Maccabees were able to come up against this force. And they uh, were victorious. And they went to the temple, which had been polluted by the Syrian Greeks. They, they were pagans. They were hedonists. And they deliberately polluted the temple. And they had a chance to rekindle the light of the menorah. It was supposed to last for about a day. They had a day's worth of, of, of oil, a pouch. It lasted miraculously for eight days. But the great story of Hanukkah is the following. What they wanted to do was, the Syrian Greeks, was to erase the identity, the national identity of this state called Israel, called Judea. And they were doing that in other places. And some people, the family of the Maccabees, Judah Maccabee and his father, they resisted that. And they found out, though, that there was an enemy within. There was a deep state, so to speak, mm. a type of uh, aristocracy that made partnership with a foreign <laughs> entity, with the Syrian Greeks, in order to denude the, the common people, the regular people, the patriotic people of their national identity. So this was a a fight for a national identity because the Maccabees understood that no country can survive unless they have a specific identity. And this was a biblical identity. So that is the lesson. If you want a country to survive, you've got to have a national identity, which for us is the Judeo-Christian ethos, which doesn't mean that you have to be a Christian or a Jew or go to church and synagogue. What it means is that you have to uh, abide and you have to uh, celebrate the attitudes that I mentioned before about personal yeah. responsibility. Yeah. You know, it, the, the parallels to some of the struggles that we have here in this country with the rise of cultural Marxism uh, and the story of Hanukkah, is, it's, really quite, it, it's really quite remarkable when you, when you think about it. Uh, it's an eight-day celebration. Talk to us about how Jews typically uh, celebrate the holiday. Well, you know, the highlight, of course, is for a Jewish family or a Jewish individual, wherever he may be, during these eight nights to light the menorah. On the first night, you light the 
one candle the second, two, and until you finally have eight candles. And you do this for eight nights, and there are blessings that you make, and there are songs to sing. Uh, people should celebrate through song, and blessings, uh, blessings convey what is the attitude? What are we supposed to learn from all this? And then there's some dishes. There's a thing called potato latkes, which is a potato pancake. It's sort of like a hash brown. It's quite tasty. And <laughs> lately, some people bring in donuts, things that are fried in oil, because actually the miracle in Hanukkah was that the oil that was supposed to last for one day lasted for eight days. So it's a very uh, joyous occasion. And here in America, for the Jewish community in the last hundred years, it's taken on more importance, more importance than it had in Europe when Jews lived in Europe or even in Israel because of Christmas. It's sort of like right. the, the, the season. And uh, it's a very important holiday now for Jewish families. You know, it originally wasn't a big gift-giving holiday, and uh, and it has become that in, in this country in particular. Is there a danger with with it becoming more about kind of sort of competing with Christmas to some degree than the core message that, that you've expressed? That's a very good point. And, of course, there's the danger for Hanukkah and Christmas. You don't want Christmas to become too commercialized and to be centered on a gift-giving theme as opposed to the deep religious and spiritual messages. It's the same thing with Hanukkah. Gifts are fine. When I was a kid, so you'd give what's called Hanukkah guilt, a nice little silver coin to, to each child. But not every night, one night. One little silver coin was probably worth a dollar. But if we become fixated on the, the gift giving and the commercialization, then we lose the opportunity of the message, the spiritual, the religious message, the idea of believing in your heritage. Heritage. America has a heritage and the Jewish people in Israel had a heritage, and uh, thank God in America it's kind of combined with this Judeo-Christian heritage, the ethos. Rabbi, one last question for you before I let you go. What is the message that people of all faiths can draw from Hanukkah? There, when you have a tyranny, if the tyranny is from a deep state within or a force without that's trying to take over the identity of a people, that even though the odds seem very difficult, if you have people with passion and conviction and daring and willing to take risk and really willing to offer up their life and their wealth, just like the founding fathers did, you can overcome tyranny and you'll have the blessing of, of, of freedom and liberty. With faith in God, of course. Absolutely. Uh, Rabbi Arye Spiro, happy Hanukkah to you, sir. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.